and welcome to Cooking with Pouncy. Thank you so much for tuning into my channel. And please, if you like what you see, hit the like button. I'm told that's important to do that. Um, I'm going to do a meatloaf tonight, and I've not done this one before. I'm going to have to search now back once I'm done with this and find out who the actual author of this recipe is and then give those folks credit for this too, which I will do. But in the meantime, you'll be seeing me put together this meatloaf, and I did find this recipe, and I don't remember where, but I'll find it for you. And uh, if you just ride along with me, we'll put this thing together, and I think it's going to be pretty good. The ingredients look pretty good, and I'll be showing those to you momentarily as well. Uh, Two pounds of ground beef. It's uh, I think it's 80-20 ground beef. That's fat to lean ratio. I've got a half a cup of milk, which is what that recipe calls for. In case you can't see it, I've already poured the milk in here. That happens to be whole milk. I found a, um, a, a one serving of whole milk in a container in my refrigerator, so I'm going to use that before it goes bye-bye. I've got an onion that I also found, which the recipe calls for. It's, it's once a half of onion. That's what that is. And I've got some breadcrumbs here. And these are just regular breadcrumbs, not Italian. I suppose you could use Italian breadcrumbs if you wanted to in yours. And I'm going to put some oregano in there. And I'll have a measurement for you in the ingredient list, guys. And I've got some basil as well. Now, all this stuff is already ground, uh, uh, ground uh, oregano and uh, basil. I've got some regular iodized salt. You can certainly use the salt of your choice as well. <laughs> However, if I'm going to follow this recipe, I need to stick to what's going on here. But anyway, i got to put a little salt in there, too. I've got some Worcestershire sauce as well it called for. Um, that's never a bad thing either if you don't overdo it. So I will, I'll be using some Lee and Perrins in there as well or Worcestershire. Uh, it also calls for, uh, I think, a half a teaspoon of crushed red pepper or red pepper flakes, and that's what I'm going to be using as well. Uh, some coarse ground black pepper I'll be using as well in this recipe. Try not to forget anything here, guys. And I've got my uh, oven is already on 350 degrees. I forgot the egg, which is here. It's getting washed out by the light here, but there's an egg floating around that bowl. I'm going to be using that one egg, which is the recipe also calls for. I'm going to do the onion, like I said, dice it up for you. And, uh, and let's just go ahead and do that, and then I'll do my pepper, okay? Not pepper, excuse me, my, uh, my meat, rather. All right, so I'm just going to dice it up real fine. So I'm going to dice this pretty fine, okay? Pretty fine. I'm going to dice it up here. It didn't say dice it fine, but that's what I'm going to do, because I think you're supposed to anyway, all right? Well, guys, as you guys know cooking with pounds. If you subscribe to my channel, you know, I had to live a lot, guys. I think it's okay if you just make it good, whatever you're making, okay? Here goes my other cross cut here for that fine dice I'm trying to get from that onion. And it's going to be pretty fine. And it did call for a half of an onion. Didn't say what size, but it said half an onion, okay? And put as much onion or none if you want your own, I guess. So there you go. And I'm trying to be careful and make them all about the same. Here, and my little cross cut here. I think I'm done doing that part. I'm done with that, I am. And put that there, and I'll chop this just a little bit more. Because we're going to get that onion chopped up pretty fine. And that's what I'm doing here, guys, as you can see here, all right? Okay, okay, and I'm going to be putting this aside here in just a minute. I'm going to get my meat in this bowl that I showed you how I'll go to. I'm going to take that completely out of there, guys. I think I'll put that right there for the moment, that egg. Now let's get this onion in here. Let's get that in here. And now, and now I'm going to do my meat. Just going to put that meat in this bowl and start breaking it up. And I got my meat here, and I got, as I said, I've got uh, two pounds of uh, meat. And let's get this ground beef in here. I'll get it all broken up. All right. That's what we're going to do there. And let's just do that, guys, okay? I'll get this stuff out of the way. I try to clean as I go here. But let's just do that. I'm just going to start breaking this up here with my hand. Like you see here, breaking it up. It's like you do any meatloaf or salisbury steak or whatever else you're making out of ground beef, meatballs or whatever. I'm rambling again, God. But anyway, let's just do that. I got it broken up pretty good there. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm going to now take my gloves off, guys. And you know why I'm going to do that? Because I don't want to be touching the rest of my stuff after I've got done playing with the meat here for God's sakes. Let's just do that, and we'll get that off. Uh -huh. 
And we'll start putting our seasoning in there. And let's put some salt. This is going to be to taste. I'm just going to do that, all right? And we're going to call it about a half a teaspoon. All right, and let's do the same thing with the pepper. Let's call that about a half a teaspoon as well. I'm ad-libbing, but the recipe is calling for that half a teaspoon, okay? And the pepper as well. And let's do the same thing with the uh, red pepper flakes. I'm going to do a half a teaspoon with that too. I might go back with a little more salt because as I'm remembering, it did call for a, a teaspoon, not a half. And I don't want too many red pepper flakes in there either. That's enough. All right. I don't know how much that was, but it was to my taste, guys. All right. Again, it, I think I need a little bit more. Um, uh, let's come up with basil and oregano. Let's do that here. A half of each one of these. All right. And another half one of these. Okay. It's smelling pretty good. You guys know oregano and stuff smells pretty good. And we're going to get that, excuse me, two tablespoons of uh, Lee and Perrins here or Worcestershire. I better shake it. All right, I've not made this before, guys. I, like I said, I stole it from someone, but I'm going to give them credit when I find out where I got it from. I want about two tablespoons of that, so let's just kind of maybe measure this, all right? All right, there's one. It has a distinct flavor, as you guys know, that uses Worcestershire sauce. So I did put what the recipe called for in that, that amount, okay? I'm going to do now that uh, egg. Just trying to make sure I've got everything in there. I'm put a little more salt because it calls for a teaspoon of salt. Now I add about a half, all right? So let's put a little bit more salt in there. And maybe a little bit more pepper because I know it said... That half a teaspoon of pepper to an house. All right, I'm going to take this egg as well. Let's just do that with the egg. And I'm going to whip this up like I'm going to scramble it. And I'm going to put that in here. All right. I think that's all the ingredients I got here with the exception of my uh, breadcrumbs. And I think that was a cup. Pretty sure the recipe called for a cup, so that's what we're going to do here, guys. A cup of these crumbs, okay? I've got my little cup here, and it's, like I said, these are just regular bread crumbs here, guys. This is an easy recipe. I'm just making it look complicated for guys' sakes. So you guys can hit the like button. I don't know why I said it, but anyway, we're going to do that cup here of our bread crumbs. Let's do that. Seems like a lot to me, but that, the recipe's calling for it, guys. Like I said, I'm going to give whomever made this recipe up credit, because it wasn't me, but I'm going to give you that in, in the ingredient list when I tell you. Here's that half of onion as well, guys. That's real fine. Let's just do that. I guess you're wondering what's going to happen now. No, you're not. I'm going to mix all this up here, and I'm going to don some gloves. I'm just trying to make sure I've got everything in here now, and I think I do. And except of my milk, my half a cup of milk I told you about that I found in my refrigerator. So let's just put that milk in there too. Kind of a strange recipe, guys, but it sounds good. So let's just keep going with it, okay? All right, I'm going to be back in a second. I'm going to don some different gloves. Here we go. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to get this all mixed up here. There it is. I think I've got, again, all the ingredients in here. And I think I do, and in a sense I think I do, I'm going to start mixing it up here, guys, okay? All right. Now, you guys have made meatloaf before, you know, you know how to do this, for God's sake, but cooking with pounds is just want to be obnoxious, like you don't know what you're doing or something. Get it all mixed up there, huh? Yep. Smells good, guys. It's raw, but it smells good. Okay. Yes, it does. I'm going to have to think, like I said, whomever came up with this recipe, it wasn't me. Well, oh, we're making it here, and we're going to see what this one tastes like. And there are many different ways you can make a meatloaf, as you guys know. I'm, a, I'm about done mixing it up, too, guys. I'm not, I don't want to get it so compact that it looks like the consistency of a density of bologna. Let's just roll these out on our board now, guys, okay? Let's just do that. And, and then let's go to, we're going to make this out of a... I'm going to make a loaf out of this, all right? Okay, I'm just kind of getting the, the big pockets out of it. There might be air. There's no, nothing wrong real bad with an air pocket, I guess, but let's just 
trying to get some of it out of there. I uh, I also left this meat. It's kind of a no-no to cook it. Pounds I said I I kind of left it out in my refrigerator so it could get close to the room temperature as well, so it wouldn't be ice cold and it isn't. What do you guys think of that beautiful loaf I just made? Now let's pull our pan over here, and we're going to get it in our pan. Very simple, guys. Very simple. Mm -mm. Almost looks good enough to eat. Now I got to move this. I don't want that here, and I'll put that here. And that was there to keep that from sliding. It's wet. If you watch my videos, you know why that's there. So let's just do that, guys. Okay. Okay. Just kind of making it to the form of the pan. I just destroyed my beautiful loaf I just made, guys. Just kidding. You saw I did some good work on that, though, didn't I, guys? Okay. Now, one of the other things I've done, too, and this is two pounds of meat in this pan, loaf pan, and it's just fine right here. It's taking up the entire pan. I've also got a little uh, cookie sheet underneath this thing just in case it boils over in my oven. Even though it's a self-cleaning oven, I don't enjoy cleaning ovens. I'm sure you don't either. So let's just do that, okay? That's kind of it for that deal, pressing it down and stuff. It's going to go again into the oven at... 350. Let me put uh, something else on here that I, I'd like to do because I've done many times before too. And I'm going to put some lines on it here just for the heck of it. And yeah, put some lines on it for the heck of it. Because yeah, I'm a fanatic, guys, okay? Yes, and just like that. It's kind of cute when it comes out of the oven. I don't know why I said cute, but it is. it's going to be cute when it comes out. Let's just do it this way now. Like that. And I'm going to do this like this. Like that. Mm, isn't that cute, guys? It's, it's cute to me. And little indentations on there. All right. All right. That's what it looks like, guys. Okay. I'm going to put this in the oven. Stop procrastinating. There you have it. But a little lines on it that made it cute. Slip it in there at 350. And I'll look at it at about 40 minutes from now. All right, guys. Here we go. Uh, this meatloaf turned out to be an hour cook instead of 40 minutes, which the recipe indicated. You, know, you got to be flexible. The oven has got different temperatures and all that sort of stuff. I thought I'd go ahead and do it by the recipe to see what happened. And again, it took actually took an hour on uh, my uh, thermometer to get that to 160 in the in the center. So it's ready. It's resting a bit. You just saw me take it out of the oven, which is what you're supposed to let it do anyway. And uh, I think it's going to be nice and juicy. I'll see juice still oozing out of it here. I think you can see that, guys. Yeah. That's oozing. Juice is oozing out, just running down there, cascading down. I'm making an art thing out of this, aren't I, guys? But anyway, that's that. I'm going to take it out and put it on this dish here to let it finish cooling. And without any further ado, I try to do that right in front of you. And hopefully you won't see an accident. I'm just going to do this to get it out of its own juice and... Try to get it underneath here and get it on that plate so I can kind of do what I need to do in terms of slicing it. Okay, guys? I've done this before, guys. Mm-mm. A little piece broke off right there. I'd eat that if the camera wasn't on me, but there you are. There you are with that, but guys, that's it right there. That is it. I'm going to put my plates in the oven now, my plates I'm going to serve this on. And, of course, I'm going to do a plate presentation for you as well. But I'm going to put my plates in the oven, which is what Cookie with Pouncey does. To heat his plates before dinner. So let's just do that now. I've got some side items here too. Yeah, I make a lot of noise. I'm turning my oven off and I'm only saying that guys because I always heat my plates. Whenever there's heat left in the oven if you will, depending on the temperature, I don't want to overheat the plates obviously, but uh, they're in there heating right now. The next time you see this guys, I'll be doing a plate presentation on heated plates. And my side items will also be on that plate, okay? Okay, guys, here it is. Beautiful presentation, I think. These plates are very, very hot. I can't, so hot I can't pick them up to tilt them like that for you. But I think you can see that. Looks very good. Very nice presentation there, guys. I put a few little cherry like cherry tomatoes on there. Uh, I've got some thyme. I've got some basil, some oregano, whatever, guys. I just made it pretty, okay? And there you have it, guys. Thank you so much, guys, once again, for tuning into my channel, Cooking with Pouncey. If it's your first time, 
Come back. If it, you've been here before, come back again. Hit that like button if you like what you see, guys, and let me know what you think as well, and pass this on as you see fit. We're going to enjoy this dinner, and we certainly hope that if you decide to make this for yourself and your family, you guys will enjoy it as well. Thank you once again, and good night.